your neck is designed to turn up here where there's no disc. So essentially you get unlimited, it's like free money. You get unlimited rotation up here. Yeah. See, when you're bench pressing, you don't bench press, hopefully, you know, like this. <laughs> Running. You know, nobody runs like <laughs> you. So if we went through deadlift, all the things that you're telling me, not much probably encourages flexibility of your chest. Yeah, on the right side. Wow, like... look at that lump right there on the right. Yeah. Gee. <laughs> I mean, it's not, that's not insignificant. That's a lump is putting it lightly. There we go. There you go. You got this knot of epic proportions. <laughs> look at that. Look at oh. that knot. Oh no. The most building, oh my goodness. See, some of these marks are more reddish, and then you get like down here, it's like kind of more purplish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A little darker in there. Mm -hmm. It's like old blood, it's like old. So I'll exercise like four to six days a week, right? And mostly, um, like I'll have some pain it's really a dull ache, like it's manageable, like I've been getting through it because I've had this for almost two years now, right? But it's a dull ache and so like at the top of like a bench press or something, like I'll feel a little bit like on the outside. Okay. Right? Um, I used to have like some, a little bit of pain in here, but I, that went away because I do like a lot of stretching. Mm -hmm. I stretch like uh, about like twice a day, right? And so I, I have like a really good pex stretch that I do that has helped with that. Um, and then I used to have knee problems which come and go, right? It used to be a lot worse, gone better, and sometimes I'll feel that like in a squat obviously. And, but a lot of it, like I used to be able to deadlift, but now I avoid it. Mm -hmm. Cause like the mid back is, it's too tight and like just like the pain, sometimes I'll get the pain in the traps, like upper traps. When I'm doing a deadlift, I'll feel it there. Sometimes like, like neck type thing, yeah. So the first kind of question is to distinguish between just muscular soreness. Obviously, you're working out. Your, yeah. The muscles are going to tear. They're going to regrow larger. Yeah. You know, that's kind of the process of what you're, if your goal is, mm -hmm. you were telling me earlier, that you want to, you know, exercise and bulk or, you know, that's the eventual goal. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be obviously, it was almost a little bit of no pain, no gain. There is something that happens where you can be damaging yourself and it not be good for you. So that is mm -hmm. not, as, as is pain with no gain. You're actually making yourself worse. So we have to... And being an athlete, from what I've been talking to you previously about, you know, you need a car mechanic. You have to have somebody guiding you through this. And I'm your first chiropractor. Yeah. You know, and, and do you have any soft tissue work in your past? Nobody's really. Working. Um, a little bit of physical therapy, but, but no elbows, no massage. Um, like maybe like one massage. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's it. It just there's you're young enough that you can kind of get away with it at your age, but mm -hmm. by 30, you're going to get in real trouble trying to yeah. make this last without some sort of mechanic that's checking on the on the cylinders and the bearings and making sure all those yeah. you know the, the knees you're kind of pointing to the meniscus the pec muscle and the shoulder and then the, you know your posture i can see even just sitting here is, is yeah, not right we mentioned earlier about the elbows you said that's during a bench press you feel some elbow pain yeah. can you describe that yeah so so down here obviously it's fine and then once you're getting up then right around here and then we, and, I just, and like lower tricep too like just kind of leads Okay, there. and I know in this arm, you, you know, we were saying this was yeah tender around there. Yeah. So we call this lateral epicondylitis. The the extensor muscles of your wrist all attach here. Mm -hmm. That attachment won't seat itself back down onto the bone. You have to compress that attachment back down onto the bone. So the the bone has kind of layers to it. There's mm -hmm. a periosteum and endosteum. The tendon dives through the bone and then makes roots in the endosteum. And so when you're tugging on it, you actually start to separate those layers of the bone. Inflammation then builds up in between oh, those right. layers. We need to panini, <laughs> compress those layers back yeah. down. That's what that pain is there. When you mention the knee, can you more specifically? Yeah, so, so my knees I always crack, right? Uh -huh. And then this will be where the pain will be, around here. Five years ago, I went to a physical therapist and he said that I had um, like, it's what was it? femoral syndrome. Yeah, patella femoral syndrome or whatever it was, and and so I did physical therapy for that, and it's helped a lot. Like it used to be a lot worse. Okay. And because he said like basically, because I grew a lot in middle school. Right. Um, and quickly he said the tendon, the patella tendon, like was really stretched, wasn't mm -hmm. able to catch up, and it was gonna, it was gonna be a problem, right? If I kept playing basketball and doing what I was doing. Right. With with that condition, right? So I had to stop and do physical therapy. Okay. 
the main the main expensive thing in the knee is the meniscus. That's the main mm-hmm. thing that I really highly value because the meniscus doesn't replace. Uh, the bone replaces, the tendons replace, muscles can be stretched, ligaments can repair, mm-hmm. but the meniscus inside your knee is the most valuable. It's a non-replaceable piece of cartilage. Every surgery ultimately happens because the meniscus is in trouble. Uh-huh. The ligaments get damaged. Those ligaments, there's two collateral and then an anterior and posterior cruciate ligament. They prevent sliding force on the, on the knee. The meniscus can handle compression pretty well. It can't handle Sliding. shearing forces. Okay. So when we have ligament injury, you twist your knee, you sprain your knee, you hyperextend, okay. you damage those supportive ligaments that then causes the meniscus to age more quickly. Okay. Muscle things, growth plate pains, you know, I'm not, they'll grow out of them because your, mm-hmm. your body's, you know, you're obviously very tall, your bones grew very quickly. Yeah. So I'm not too worried about, but the meniscus I'm gonna check in a minute, that's what I really, that's, that's the most expensive part of your knee. Tell me. Oh yeah, like um, definitely okay. with mobility. Like if you look at the back, right, like at the left, right. You know, it's all right. I don't know, like if it's good enough, but sure. but over here, it's like as as far as you can bring. Yeah. So it's right. You're t- internally rotating. This is internal. This is called external rotation. Mm-hmm. This is internal rotation. You're unable to internally rotate. Yeah. Have you had injury to that shoulder joint? Have you? No, that's the thing. Like this was always a bad one. Uh-huh. And then I had some physical therapy done on this, and this one fell behind. Like, with my theory, he loosened this one up, and then, I don't know. Could be. I mean, generally, <laughs> yeah. range, of, range of motion, you lose because of injury. You know, something okay. happens, and then your body protects it. My car doesn't clean itself. My dishes don't just, you know, you have to work to maintain mobility. And that's gotcha. kind of, it's, it's tough because when you're a teenager, you really don't have to do anything. You're just like, I'm just flexible, and I just no. wing it. We're about an inch, inch and a half forward where your shoulders are from your head. When you're relaxed, looking straight forward, this should line up and not by muscular forcing. It should yeah. just be where you want to be, yeah. right? The natural position. And so being a student in years of, you know, being held here, your body doesn't come back to where it's supposed to be, right? It stays somewhat in that retain that forward mm-hmm. posture. And then when you exercise in the wrong posture, it's like driving a car with a bad alignment certain parts of the car are going to be under extra stress because mm-hmm. the alignment's incorrect. So the shoulders are rounded forward. You know, this, these are, these are you know, your ability to externally rotate or bring your shoulders back. Mm-hmm. You know, it looks like this, this, this is the one that you couldn't bring behind your shoulder. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. This one is more forward than your left one. So your, your static position on your, your, your right shoulder is more forward. So your ability, you understand? Like, yeah. Push, push, push left shoulder forward. Run shoulder forward. Now try to bring your arm. Now keep the shoulder there in that position yeah, and try to put your hand behind your back. Yeah. You can't do it. No. <laughs> now bring your shoulder back and then all of a sudden you can <laughs> yeah. try to get try with the right one. No, but you try to bring the shoulder back first though. What I'm saying is bring oh, yeah. the shoulder back mm-hmm. and now we gotta get the, sh- we gotta, it's like tight like you feel right here. Yeah, <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah. Your shoulder doesn't actually come back. Mm-hmm. That's where you also were pointing when you said the pec was yeah. And this is where, for better or for worse, this is why I asked you your goals earlier, because mm-hmm. part of the price you're going to pay for strengthening your pecs, and looking all macho, is that the stronger your pecs are, the more rounded forward your shoulders become, right? You have to, mm-hmm. you have to fight yeah. to keep your shoulders in the right alignment. Typically, the pec is stronger than your rhomboids, right? The rhomboids pull your shoulder mm-hmm. back, the pec pull your shoulder forward. It's mm-hmm. like a tug-of-war battle. The pec's always going to win. So the shoulder's not going to... Yeah, this is where your shoulder belongs. Your shoulders are, you know, they're here. They're not. They're not. <laughs> they're not where they're supposed to be in the center position. When, and so in order to bring your, if your shoulder wants to be here and it's supposed to be here, I got to take your shoulder <laughs> here, hold it there for 20 minutes, and then your shoulder will just want to be where it's supposed to be in the middle. Right. Makes sense. So we call it high, uh, mirror image stretching or extension stretching. So we need to stretch out that pec. There's probably some joint injury in there that your body's in avoidance of, and that's why you don't necessarily feel it until I go in there and dig, and then gotcha. you're hurting me, Dr. Ed. Well, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll clear that up. There's gonna be some yeah. bruises, there's gonna be some bruising on that shoulder. Um, okay. Any spinal pain, any back pain right now? Um, not standing up, no, but like sometimes I'll get some like, just like general tightness like around here. And if you like rotate to the right, if you turn to the right of your chest, does that make it worse? Uh, not too bad, no. It's turn left? Horrible. 
Now, I just noticed earlier when you were turning your neck, like, show me your range of motion. Just look straight forward. Now, turn your head to the left. Is, 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 not, okay. That's it. Okay, turn your head right. Just notice your neck. Like you, you, you were, when I was talking to you, you kind of wanted to do the Larry, the Larry King move. Right. You know, Larry, don't pick on Larry King, Ed. You know, my point is that you know, they'll, you know, they'll turn your neck. You get the idea? We turn our shoulders to rotate our, to, to take out the fact that we've lost range of motion in our neck. You're rotating with your shoulders. And yeah. so. Yeah, I definitely feel that like when I'm turning here and I don't like move the rest of my body and I move the neck, it starts to get really tight here and then like, it turns, like readjusts, you know. The neck is designed to work at the top first and then the bottom last. So there's no discs between the skull and atlas and atlas and axis. The first disc is there at C2. Mm -hmm. And wherever there's discs, it re represents a tread. There's only so many rotations that you're going to be able to put on these discs before they wear out and you've heard of disc bulges and disc herniations. Yeah. The discs are kind of done at that point. Mm -hmm. Your neck is designed to turn up here where there's no disc. So essentially you get unlimited, it's like free money. You get unlimited rotation up here. Yeah. You can't wear out anything. Now if your upper neck is tight because your head's forward, this area isn't bending properly which then makes you over utilize your lower neck. And that's what causes that tension and pain or mm -hmm. soreness. It'll turn to radiating your 20, you know, but my point is if you keep doing that, it's starting off as a small inflammation and then it'll build yeah, to a, yeah, like we have a real problem now. So mm -hmm. we're on the preventative side of this of we need to get the per you back in the right alignment, which is curved, called a lordosis. Your neck is supposed to be arched. It's not supposed to be ortho. No, I definitely don't have like, yeah. <laughs> The curve isn't there. Well, you, and you, and if you didn't know it was supposed to be there or you weren't doing things to keep it there, mm -hmm. why would it be there? If you, if you don't actively participate in cleaning your teeth, there's no chance your teeth are just magically going to stay clean. You have to do something. I grew up with a chiropractor as a father. Cross this arm under. Cross this arm over. Take a deep breath in for me. A little sit up for me. Help me. A little sit up. And exhale for me. All the air out. Let the air out for me. Let it all go. Right, deep breath in for me. Head back for me. Head back. Exhale. Let it all go. Yeah, nothing. Deep breath in. Head back. Exhale. Wow. Wow. It's, I mean, it's just like a two by yeah. four in there. I knew it was going to be working. <laughs> well, right. Thanks. <laughs> I had my work cut off for me. You know, you're 20 years old, and you know, your back is supposed to be. Let your head flat. Oh. Flexible. Yeah. See, when you're bench pressing, you don't bench press, hopefully, you know, like this, <laughs> right? You lock your chest, right? Mm -hmm. This is excellent form, Ed, right? Yeah. So what are you trying to say here, Ed? Bench pressing encourages chest rigidity, right? Because mm -hmm. any motion you have while you're bench pressing would be wasted energy and yeah. not effective at actually doing the, I'm joking a little bit, but my point is that mm -hmm. running, you know, nobody runs like <laughs> you run with a rigid yeah. chest. Mm -hmm. So if we went through deadlift, all the things that you're telling me, not much probably encourages flexibility of your chest, mm -hmm. right? Most of it's going to be you're more efficient, you waste less energy, you're more powerful if your chest is stiff. So that's part of what we have to balance is now we have to go in there and loosen it up yeah. for the sake of your spinal health. Top leg bent. There we go. Hands around your belly for me. Put the back of your head in that little slip there. About, just turn your head towards me. There we go. Turn your head towards me. Perfect. You got a deep breath in for me. Try to twist. Exhale. Wow, real stiff here and just turning. All right, that's head for me. Deep breath in. It's okay. Exhale. There we go. All right, face that for me. Okay. Yeah, yeah on the right side. Wow, right. look at that lump right there on the right. Yeah. Gee. I mean, it's not, that's not insignificant. That's a lump is putting it lightly. Mass. <laughs> I mean, it's a huge knot. It's an injury. So essentially what's going to happen is your head's tilting left. You understand? No, I, I, I see like my neck is putting it like off like a little bit. Yeah, because you're going to avoid this. Your neck's going to gonna go left and then your right shoulder's going to drop. We call it a riding reflex. Your eyes always seek the horizon. I got you. Mm -hmm. It's okay. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that was tough. That bone has not moved <laughs> in a while. In twenty years. Twenty years. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There you go. Yeah. That feel like what yeah. you expected. <laughs> uh, I guess I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the problem's right up here on the right upper. Mm. Wow.
You know it's bad when the chiropractor's in shock. I mean, that's a knot, man. You're just young. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. It's just you're, 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 you're too young to have this large amount of plaque kind of idea. Does that make sense? Like, how did you get this much plaque in you're yeah. only 20 years old? Like, see, your head doesn't want to tilt right. Come on, come on. See? <laughs> your, your head, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Like the Kool-Aid man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, he scared me to death. All of a sudden, I thought the Kool-Aid man was going to start But You probably don't even know what I'm talking about, right? He doesn't know what I'm talking about, does he? No, I think I remember. Do you know the Kool-Aid man? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. You know, the kids are all just sitting on the couch like, Hey, guys, what do you want to do today? He comes busting through the wall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> scared me half to death. <laughs> That's what I was noticing when you were, because you were sitting facing, I was on your right, and I, when you tried to turn your head right, yeah. it was like you were like, because <laughs> this joint won't compress. Uh, so right lateral bend, so right lateral bend and right rotation are the same things biomechanically. So if you can't rotate right, you can't tilt right. They're, the vertebrae do the same motion essentially. Hmm. You have a you've lost a significant amount of your ability to tilt your head to the right. This will end up being at 34 a left disc herniation in your lower neck, right? Because you're going to wear out the left lower neck at a faster rate because the upper neck is too tight specifically more on the right side and then the curve in your neck is not there mainly due to this being avoided because your neck doesn't want to compress this it's then sojourning and leaving and <laughs> finding another place to reside we have to encourage this area to go back to where it belongs and to do the job it was originally intended to do which is be a joint and move <laughs> yeah right there I'm sure that feels lovely you know uh, how does it feel? <laughs> I'm, I'm not, <clears throat> see, I can't. This is where two two things happen to the doctor-patient relationship. If I constantly ask you how you feel, then I'll start changing my care because I want to make people like me, and I just want to make people feel better, right? And so then the doctor starts to get brainwashed, right? Okay, let me back off, right? Because I'm hurting, right? But they're mm. in the sense that this area needs to be broken down. It's good for you, but we. I, I know it doesn't feel good. I can feel the knot. You say I don't need to. How does it feel? How does it yeah. feel? You know, he doesn't care about you. He didn't ask him how he was feeling, because that constant barrage will brainwash the doctor. The doctor won't do what's needed to do. Does the gym trainer at the gym constant? How does it feel? Does that feel good? No, it doesn't. Yeah. I'm burning. My, my pecs are burning. My my legs are burning. We don't use feeling as our barometer, and then it brainwashes the patient because then the patient goes. Doctor Ed's constantly asking me how I'm feeling, and so I feel pretty good today guess I don't need any treatment, right? And so, yeah, that's true. you know, um, half your spine has feeling and your body can avoid problems and you feel great until 10, 15 years later, you don't. So pain or feeling is a poor barometer. Dentists don't use feeling as their barometer. They don't say, how do your teeth feel? Okay, you're all set, have a nice life. <laughs> See you when your teeth hurt, right? If you're waiting till your teeth hurt before you get care, you're already late. But for some uh, reason with our spine, we're left to like, how do you feel? What? Somebody's got to be the bad guy and unlock these frozen areas. Right there. Oh, man. Because your neck belongs way back here. You know, it's where your neck is supposed to be. So I want you working on trying to tilt your head to the right. That's part of your first exercise is to get your head on straight. Uh, <laughs> figuratively and, and, and not figuratively. you got to get your Four scrapes. I mean, it's. Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you think? Have you ever had gua sha on anybody? No. 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 I saw yeah. it on the video. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I barely. I mean, that didn't hurt at all, right? I mean, it just uh -huh. felt like nothing, probably. You know, my point is that it comes out as a mark. What's internally? You can feel this just mm -hmm. knot mm -hmm. right there. It, it's like the original tissue tore, and then it healed like that. You understand? Know it didn't heal with the original alignment and flexibility. It's like a scar on your skin. You know. I was gonna say it's like a scar. 
scar tissue. It's scar this. tissue, like on you, but it's internal. It's internal scar tissue from falls, injury, whiplash. It's a it's, you can't see it from the surface, but you can feel it through the layers that it's knotted up like a ball of yarn. It's it's not. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot in, for a twenty year old to have. I, I think of it as plaque. It's just plaque that's going to make him. It's it's going to make this area not feel good, and so you're just going to instinctively avoid it. And then when he exercises at the gym, he's his alignment is in a way that certain areas now are overstressed because this area is not showing up. Going to be an athlete, you need a car mechanic. It's as simple as that. Just you kind of have to have somebody going through the car and making sure everything's staying lubricated and working. And okay. just just laying there flat. Can you see that, Carl? I mean, your right shoulder is. Can you, you see it? I mean, it is interesting. It's noticeable. I told you. I, I told you I had a problem. With that. <laughs> It's okay. She's like, are you sure you want to drive three hours? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, we, we'll def we definitely had more than one conversation. <laughs> All right, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, this is just, just combing, same thing as your neck. There we go. Should feel good. Eventually, just, you know, but probably not so much the first visit, but eventually, it's actually, I hate to say, you actually look forward to it, but... First time you have carpet cleaning, it's like, oh, now all these stains! <laughs> Who put all that in there? I mean, what happened in here? Oh, no, Dr. Ed, no, not, not that. <laughs> oh. All right. Oh, no, I shouldn't have signed up for this. Mom, I think we shouldn't have made that three-hour drive. I didn't know he was going to take the shirt <laughs> off and rub my pack. I didn't see that in the video. Uh-huh. <laughs> right there. Look at that knot. Oh. That doesn't exist over here, right? I mean, that. look at that. Right? Feel that. Right? I mean, it's a little baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, that, that's how small it is on the side. That's a little tiny little baby there. And you got this knot of epic proportions. <laughs> look at that. Look oh. at that knot. Oh no. This might be, you know, you might be more dominant. You might, you're right dominant. You know, yeah. so, you know, so when you're exercising, sometimes the weight's not centered exactly, and you're pushing actually more with the right. So this one's staying, you know, you injured this one more, and it's healed tighter. That's what's drawing your shoulder forward, and now you can't, you know, stretch your shoulder back, and and it will cause labral tears at 35. <laughs> you understand? It will cause rotator cuff injuries and labral tears in your shoulder because of your forward shoulder that you're seeing as I can't bring my arm back. This joint's not happy because this is, you know, throwing your shoulder into a compromised alignment. All right. Look at that. I mean, that's just, yeah. Um, you know, we can try to show you how to do this yourself. You can go online, get a gua sha tool, but there's a, I mean, we'll take a picture of his pec here so we can see, but there's a huge knot right here on his pec. That has to be stretched out. Even the glenohumeral joint here is all inflamed. Arms up and back. Let's see here. All right, all right. There you go. So you can get there. So it's just a matter of holding this, and it makes sense, and stretching this like this. And you're going to work all these angles. And you might actually find an angle. Let's see if you can find it. Like this one right here. This one goes a little farther on the left. This one doesn't want to. Right there is where the. Right in there. So with this, you want to massage towards the elbow. You don't want to massage that way. You want to work towards the elbow and then no transfriction over the attachment. So this, you work this muscle towards its attachment. Mm -hmm. you see any, any tenderness like in here? Yeah. Yeah. So Oof, I, I know. felt it in my, in my knuckle. <laughs> yeah, you got to work all that out of here. And then on the attachment, you kind of just hold that down. So I call it Panini. You got to... Compress that attachment back down and hold about 10 seconds. 
take a break. Get the idea? This uh -huh. won't self-resolve. You have to, I can't tell you how many times in my work and in, in working on people, I've busted my attachments and I've tried experimenting on myself and like letting, let, come on attachment, you got this, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't get better <laughs> until you actually work on it and compress it down and then it quickly gets better. They don't self-resolve. You have to, especially if you're an athlete, you have to compress this attachment back down. So mm -hmm. I kind of come from the forearm up onto the attachment, so from this direction, mm -hmm. and then compress. Okay. Okay. It's okay. This is why when I did the hug adjustment earlier, you know, there was no, no movement, no participation. This area is on lockdown. Somebody's got to be the bad guy and open this area up for commerce, for trade. <laughs> No trade, nobody in, nobody out, it's all shut down. It's a city on lockdown. The shirt's getting spied on lockdown. It's on lockdown. Open it up for commerce. Open it up for Won't you hardly know, please? I go try to go as deep as you can handle without overwhelming it. But I am trying to push it a little bit, try to get to that edge and then back off a little bit. Tough being six three also is that every conversation you have mostly is looking down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you have to <laughs> right, so that's part of it also is that the curse of being tall is <laughs> you have to you have to learn to either use your peripheral vision or not tuck your chin every time and Your lats, quadrasum borum, diaphragm all attaches right in here. It still wasn't as bad as a pack, though. Right. <laughs> that was serious business, Ed. <laughs> I've had many people tell me the same thing. Like, it was all fun and games until Ed worked on the pack. <laughs> has to compress also to get your shoulder back. This all has to move out of the way here. You actually see, I know your stretch marks from your crew real quick, but you see how the marks are actually more on the scar tissue because that's what the gua sha picks up is the inflammation that's trapped in these scarred up areas. Can't be more evident than that. I mean, you know, I gua sha the tissue evenly, but look where the marks 
mainly come out where the scars are. That's what the, that's what the gua sha is for. That's the whole purpose because the scar is knotted up. It's trapped acidity inside of it. That's why it comes out not as much around because these areas are flowing. They're actually they're not scarred up, and the scarred up areas are bound up. Right, but if I'm, if I'm just bruising him, then why didn't the bruise come out in between? <laughs> why did the bruise only come out where the scar was? Well, that's because, you know, the most building. Oh my goodness! See, some of these marks are more reddish, and then you get like down here, it's like kind of more purplish, mm -hmm. <laughs> a little darker in there. Mm -hmm. It's like old blood. It's like old title of the thumbnail. Or, Mom ready to beat me up because of what I did to her son. You know, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have taken you. I knew it. <laughs> I had questions. <laughs> One thousand years. This is they've been doing this. One of the oldest techniques for relieving back pain. You know, maybe forty years in America. <laughs> you know, it's not fas fascia blasting. Fascia blasting is the Americanized version of this, but this. The, Foundation of what I'm doing here right now is literally a thousand years. I mean, chiropractic is only 127 years old. You know, modern medicine is only a couple hundred years old. Right. You know, this is 1,000 years old. What is it called? Gua Sha. Is it sore? Mm -hmm. yeah, right there. Yep. Gua means just comb. Sha means redness. It's a way of flushing the tissue, washing out the acidity. This is why the bones didn't move. This is why his back was so stiff. Because it's all congested. And try to put some WD 40 on these joints and get them moving for you. If it was easy, I wouldn't have a job. <laughs> it was easy to get joints that are frozen moving. They have a device at Walmart that you could buy that <laughs> you just put on your back and loosen your joints for you. Right? You would have to drive six hours and have Dr. Ed practically sit on you. And <laughs> so just take a picture of Please. it, right? Yeah, because he yeah. cannot see. My goodness. Well. Yeah. yeah. To kind of show. Well, this is, this is the one. This is the one that was. Lucas, I think we're going to probably have to let people know that you were in the here. No what? We, we've been playing it very low key because when you tell people that you live in Miami and you're going to a chiropractor in Sarasota, <laughs> they're like, what? Right? Yeah. Notice the color difference? Yeah. It's like a darker. This is more light. This is old, old stuff. Notice the scar. Like I said, your, your stretch marks, those are, this is where the scar tissue is and that's what you're seeing in there. All yeah, you can see them like they go, striations. They go along. Yeah. yeah. All that wow. is built up. I think of it like plaque. There we go. Yeah, I lost. Yes. Victory. Yes. Okay. Two. <laughs> yeah, earn every. It should be moving way easier than that. They should have already moved. Shouldn't take an hour of massage to get your back. Mm -hmm. You know, the joints are supposed to be moving effortlessly. Right. Lucas is like, yes, two more. Yep, I felt them. Yep. <laughs> I know it's not easy. Breathe. No, Ed. I know you're gonna breathe. I know, breathe. All right, it's okay, all right. Okay, all right, breathe. Exhale. Sorry, that was not fun, Ed. All right, let's check, check the rest again. Okay, I got you, I got you to feel.
Any pain when I press in here? It's like thunder. It is? Yeah. Compare that to here. It's about the same. Okay. There's some knee stretching I'm going to show you in a second to do. The knee is basically avascular until you're, make, unless, you're, unless you're deeply bending it, there really isn't much blood flow. So mm -hmm. things get easily stagnant in there. I want you to stand up for me if you can. <laughs> Push your knee right there and then come down and sit your butt down to your heel. I want that butt bottom to heel contact. Is that easy, difficult? Uh, I don't. Easy? It's like a tight Stretches? Yeah. A little stretch, okay. Yeah, it's like a little stretch. Yeah. The idea is to do that about 10 times, but I want to go to the next step is you turn your leg like this. You turn, turn it so that the foot is on the table like this. So the toes are pointed. So come this way a little more towards me. There we go. And you come down inside of the heel. I feel that like in my yeah. Ankle, like, right. We got work to do. Okay. See what I'm saying? You got you, you should your butt should be able to reach that. Yeah, well, I can't like sit like on. You know how like people sit on their ankle. Like, I understand. I can't, like, well, we've got to practice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> come on. I want I want at least that butt touching the heel. There you go. Make that butt to co heel contact. Stretch. Oof, yep. Hurts like right here. Uh huh. Man, I'm gonna have you press back into my elbow with your elbow. Press back right there. Press a little bit back more. There you go. Good. Something, something cracked, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're bringing Sean. Keep pressing back. Keep pressing back. There we go. All right. So the pain in his arch is coming from the tibialis anterior muscle. So this muscle dorsiflexes or brings your toes upward. When you had your toes pointed, you were stretching this out, and it wasn't stretching. That's why it was hurting in your arch because this tendon of this muscle supports the arch. It's this right here is the, and Ed, that feels lovely, right? You know, that's what you got to work on. Not talking to you anymore, Ed. Uh, this guy just hurts. Work on that right there. Right there. Get the idea, Lucas? Right? This is that's why you're. That's why this this muscle supports this arch. You gotta start stretching. This muscle needs to start lengthening. Your toes are hammering. Even notice your toes. These are especially on this foot. Worse, right? See the difference? Mm -hmm. These toes are more flush. And then if you broke, if you bust these toes, or this comes from too much weight on your toes. That's what then contracts this muscle, has arch pain. But you know, this, this your toes are supposed to be you know here. <laughs> Yeah, I know, and it's supposed to be spaced out too. They're like all clumped up. Like, right. <laughs> like the pinky toes, like under the other one. I just don't, I feel, I just yeah. said that your toes belong right here. That's where they belong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's, that's why you're unable to stretch. I want you stretching that in the ankle and the arch you're having trouble because this won't. Did that hurt? It felt, felt like the, the toe stretch. Mm. Yeah, you gotta work on, you gotta work on this. You'll eventually have toe, there are going to be toe issues, metatarsal, tarsal issues, because the joint isn't lined up properly. you got the joints, so we call it metatarsal drop, you ever heard of that, metal, metatarsal supports, metatarsal lifts. Mm -hmm. um, so the phalange is going upwards, which is stressing out the ligament between the metatarsal and the phalange. So they call it a metatarsal drop. Mm -hmm. This is dropping. So you want to take the toe, pull it, and then curl that direction is where you want to go with the foot. So you wouldn't go like this, you shouldn't do like that, that would be bad, right? Yeah. You want to go like that and work the toes in a curled position. Uh, feet together, knees together, and then rotate your knees left. There you go. And eventually your knees touch the ground, eventually, you know, there you go. There you go. Uh. <laughs> knees right. Okay, mm -hmm. it's good. Knees right, come on. It's like working a drawer. Sometimes you can't just push a drawer in, sometimes you gotta give a drawer a little bit of a, <laughs> A shake to get the drawer to slide in. <laughs> right, you ever have that? No. Yeah. Feel like experience. You can't, you can't just press on a drawer. Like why isn't it shutting? <laughs> you gotta get a little bit. Like, <laughs> so that's what the knees do. We're trying to wiggle and trying to move the vertebrae forward. They're stuck. Right. And then the more he does this, the easier the next time he adjusts. And and then once this is all easy, we move to a dental roll. 
and then you live on this the rest of your life, and you have a long, happy life, and never have any disc injuries, and all your friends fall apart. How are you lasting so long, Lucas? What's your secret? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just got good genes. And Dr. Ed. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know. <laughs>